What's going on guys, it's The Doctor Show here and we are back with some more Call of Duty World War 2 content. Let me first just say we are absolutely loving this game and hope you guys are enjoying it too, whether that be zombies, multi, or just the HQ, the happiest place on earth. It's Disneyland. On with the video. Today we've got 5 tips and tricks that we think could really improve your time in zombies on the final Reich and perhaps help you finish an easter egg or reach round 300. Alright, enough chat, let's get right into it, here we go. Our first tip is to basically be conscious of the order you purchase your perks. One of the fundamental principles of zombies since Verrucht has been that if you down, you will lose your perks you have purchased. Now over the years, Treyarch and Infinity Ward have made minor exceptions to this law with Easter Egg rewards, and most recently with certain Gobblegums or Fortune cards. Sledgehammer, however, decided not to adhere to this rule back in Exo Zombies on Advanced Warfare, and that has carried through to World War II Zombies, where the mechanic is the same. Basically what happens in Sledgehammer Zombies in multiplayer is that when you down, as you bleed out, you lose your perks one by one at evenly distributed intervals along your bleed out timer. Now what this means is that depending on how quickly your friends or acquaintances revive you, you may be able to keep some of your perks. This is much easier to understand seeing it visually, but basically if you are revived straight away, you may keep all your perks. If you are revived halfway through your timer, you'll probably lose like half your perks. And if you get clutch revived right at death's door, you'll have no perks, but hey, at least you've got your good health, right? That's what really counts. Now, these perks don't disappear randomly, but disappear in the order you purchase them. Hence, our tip is to buy the perks you want slash need the most last, and the ones you need the least first. This is even more possible in World War II than in Exo Zombies, as Jug is not a perk, so you can still buy that straight away. For example, my favorite four perks in multiplayer are Double Tap, Stamina Up, Speed Reload, and Quick Revive, in that order. So when I go to buy my perks, I'll try and buy them in the reverse order, picking up Quick Revive first and trying to hold off on Double Tap till I've bought the other three. This tip is pretty much only useful in multiplayer, as in solo you keep all your perks automatically if you have Quick Revive. On to tip number two. Our second tip is to consider using the Grenade... Grenadier? Grenadier mod. Grenadier mod? Oh shit, not a pronunciation thing. Now this mod was overlooked by even us at first, as its description is something like carry twice the amount of lethal equipment. Alright, well grenades can be alright, but that's no long term strat, and with only 3 slots, we never consider this mod. However, that was until some kind soul posted on reddit that this includes the Jack in the Boxes. Jack in the Boxes, for those who don't know, are the World War II version of Monkeys, or Little Arnies, or whatever the fuck it was in Infinite Warfare, holy shit, I've actually already forgotten. Well, I can't be fucked to Google it, but you get my point. So being able to carry 6 Jack in the Boxes really makes this mod worth considering including it in your loadout. Tip number 3 is a little tip I like to call the 5th Perk Push. I've never called it that, but it's a pretty suitable name. Let's start with a hypothetical. Let's say you are running around the map having the time of your life. Maybe you are exploring, haven't owned the game for very long. You feel like a kid in a candy store, or rather a kid in a Second World War Nazi German town overrun by zombies. You see a perk called, um, fuck, I don't know its name. It's called Slappy Taffy. It's, it's called Slappy Taffy. It looks like fun. You buy it. It fucking sucks, dude. What the fuck? I mean, meleeing is fun for a little bit, but what about when a billion zombies start coming each way? You can't slap your way out of this one, little Billy. Furthermore, you haven't left perk room for double tap. Now, thankfully, you've watched the Doctor Show tips and tricks, and are aware that if you purchase a fifth perk, it pushes all your perks to the right and deletes the first one you bought. Not only that, but you can keep doing this, meaning you can then buy speed reloading and get rid of the electric cherry type perk you bought second, thinking it might be good, but was actually a giant letdown. I think that pretty much sums up this tip. Keep buying perks to delete your old ones. You're doing a great job, B. James. Keep up the good work. I just got to quickly step in for the bonus tip of the day. Can I get some air horns? Yeah, there we go. This cheeky tip is to improve your melee skills. So you know how in World War II zombies they have this kill animation where you brutally decapitate the zombies with the shovel? Yeah, well, this animation isn't always good. It locks you in for a long time and can get you killed. To skip this animation, just simply crouch while meleeing and you'll be all good. It'll become way easier to knife. Anyway, that's it for me. I'll hand the mic back to B. James.
Moving on to tip number four, our sneakiest tip of all the five and Leroy's personal favorite. So basically this tip is how to turn on the ability to cancel reloading once you begin the animation using sprinting. Now this won't be for everyone. Some people like continuing reloading while you try and run away from the hordes of zombies. But isn't it nice to have the option to cancel the reload when you sprint? So for those bug zombie dudes that are the new Max M around, for them you would probably want to be able to run away and reload at the same time. But if say that huge flamethrower zombie rocks up and you are fiddling around reloading when you still got more bullets in the clip, you may want to cancel that shit so you can just shoot the shit out of them. Or perhaps for realism, if you are running away from zombies, are you realistically going to be like reloading or more like, oh shit, and just run away? Anyway, it's uh, nice to have the option. Maybe give it a go and see if it's good for you. Basically, to change the setting, go to multiplayer settings, go to the very bottom and change the hustle sprint cancel setting. It's in the multiplayer setting menu as it has a far greater influence over multiplayer gameplay than zombies gameplay. The fifth and final tip, or will it be a trick? To be honest, I've really been using the two terms interchangeably. Feel free to leave your definitions of the two terms and how they differ. Feel uh, very, very free to do that. Fifth tip is more like fifth tips. Because we really struggled coming up with a good definitive fifth tip, but had a whole heap of little tips that may or may not be obvious depending on who you are. Anyway, I'm just going to quick fire list them off here, so let's go. Pressing left on the keypad lets you drop 200 jolts. This is the way to share jolts to terrible or struggling players. Additionally, if a player has a consumable that allows them 50% off door purchases, you can give them 50% of all of a door's value and then they can buy the door to save, save, save. The sword motherfuckers have a weak spot on their backs. Good technique to take them out is to use the camouflage special and shoot their backs. Alternatively, or, or additionally, use a Tesla to freeze them first, then shoot them. At the present moment, if you prestige on zombies, you no longer receive zombie craze. It's a glitch that's sure to be patched very soon, but keep that in mind if you were very close. When shooting the Zeppelin, be sure to coordinate with teammates which light you are shooting. Don't waste ammo or shooting different lights. Also use an assault rifle or LMG for this step. When you get to the boss fight and see the monster for the first time, be sure to make a really funny comment about its appearance. Perhaps make a timely joke about Klaus's possible relationship to the monster, for example. By making critical comments and successfully making your friends laugh, you'll gain social capital, ease any anxiety they may be feeling prior to the boss fight, and potentially establish or re-establish your position as the joker of the group who always loves good bands even in dire situations. Anyway guys, that'll have to be the video. I'm all out of tips and tricks. I hope you picked up something that will help you in your zombie slaying endeavors. If you have, or even if not, please give this video a like, subscribe to us, and maybe even consider sharing this video to your other zombie slaying friends to help our channel grow and help them get on your level of skill. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.